Alrighty, welcome everyone. I'm Tiabu and I am here for Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei. I took a little bit of time this morning to make a thumbnail for the one that just went up live on YouTube, and uh, then immediately we're going in and watching more Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei. Um, so, last week we watched the very first episode and had plenty to discuss about it. Usually do on the first episode of a new show because there's lots of stuff to talk about, about like the general art style and the things that are being done and the introduction of the characters, and there's, there's lots of good stuff. So, uh, uh, mainly we met our, uh, our sensei, Mr. Despair himself, Itoshiki, uh, I forget his actual, his other name, um, and he is, like, the maximum pessimist, the, the worst pessimist ever, and then we meet one of his, well, we find out one of his students, Kafka, who is the polar opposite, a maximal optimist, uh, he cannot see anything except in the light of despair, and she cannot see anything except in glorious, rose-tinted, sakura-colored beautifulness. And so, obviously, there's a little bit of instant conflict between these two uh, interesting, mm, almost caricatures. They're, you know, they're, they're entirely unrealistic as people, but as characters, that gives them a lot of room to explore and argue about really interesting stuff. Uh, it also appears that we've got a rather large cast of interesting... Uh, other students in the, the class who have seemingly all of their own unique quirks, psychological issues, whatever. Um, and I have a feeling that we're going to go through and explore like and focus heavily on one person's issue uh, and then move along and then have them like wrapped up into the storyline as we progress. Where is this going? I, I don't know if it's really going anywhere. It may just be continuous slice of life and and enjoyable humor coming from the, the different conflicts and different issues that these characters face, along with some sort of like more serious, ah, how do you how do you put it, uh, satire in a sense, because it's it's poking fun at things that are real issues by blowing them up out of proportion. And and yeah, satire actually works pretty well. Um a satirical look at psychological and social issues, something like that. In any case, I really enjoyed this first episode. It's got a lot of a lot of style, a lot of shaftiness, a lot of intriguing stuff, and the characters, partly because of just how strongly they are aligned with their their like traits, specific the way that they think. It's super super hardcore. Uh, I think it makes them extremely interesting and and. I'm excited to see more of them and how they interact. So, moving forward, uh, I don't know who, if anyone, we're going to focus on. We were just recently introduced to, uh, by name, a character with the, the split bangs who appears to have OCD or something in that realm. Um, very, very careful about order and keeping things neat and symmetrical and stuff like that. Um, we've also met the, the, I believe her name is Arai, who is another teacher and seemingly the guidance counselor for the school, and uh, it, it appears that Itoshiki is mm, going to be going to talk to her pretty frequently. Also, she's kind of cute. Just saying, she's kind of cute. Uh, no idea where we're going. Kind of expecting we're going to focus on the girl with the split bangs, whose name we will catch as, as soon as we can, um, as well as babble and argue a little bit about random things in the environment and in the world that that itoshiki sensei thinks suck which is everything so i don't know if we're gonna watch episodes two and three i assume we will this seems like it's probably like a two episodes per reaction type of show um that will have probably a pretty wide variance in like length of discussion um depending on the subject material and, and how much of it lands and how interesting the animation gets we'll have to see but I think, I think we're going to try for two episodes per reaction and just, as usual, wing it. If, if we feel like watching an extra episode, maybe we will. If we feel like um, just watching one and we're done for the day, then we will. But I think we're going to aim for two and see, see how that goes. So, starting us off, we are on Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei episode two. I have the episode up and ready to go. It is at zero seconds. There will be two versions of this reaction video, a picture-in-picture -picture version with the video up there, which you can find in the description, and a timer-based version, which will be up on YouTube. Uh, the picture-in-picture -picture version will have the video in it, but it will not have discussion in it. Timer-based version up on YouTube will have discussion in it, but it will not have the video in it, with the exception of 
subs and a timer over here in the corner. Uh, and if you are planning on using the timer-based version and syncing it up with your own copy of Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei, you can do that. You probably want to hit the button on the beep. There will be a countdown timer that will go boop, 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 beep at the beginning of, like, soon. And, uh... Uh, on the beep and the green light is the exact same frame that Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei starts playing on my screen, so if you're playing along on your screen, that's probably when you want to do so. Yeah, if you're, if you're doing that, get it ready, because that timer is coming your way right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's trying to kill himself on a train now. No. <laughs> She could say you could have killed me again. Yup. Wow. Oh, those discordant piano chords. I like that OP. It's pretty dope. So I wonder if... Never mind. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's that penguin symbol. <laughs> uh huh. Ah. <laughs> I mean, that happens, but... Sure. Probably not. That is trippy. Ha 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 ha. Might as well just tell him to stop breathing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would require me to die. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, here we go. Namai wa. Wow.
It's your job, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. I like her. Hmm. Just happened to come along? Komori. So, Hiki... Is her name Hiki? <laughs> ha ha ha. Come out? No. <laughs> Wait. I wonder who that voice is. Somebody, somebody I think I recognize. <laughs> As you wish. <laughs> Indeed. Extremely. A what? That doesn't seem right. It's like a Game Boy bleep. It's cool. <laughs> Ooh, that's cool. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Oh my god, they're gonna murder this girl! Alright, face reveal? Oh wow. <laughs> oh Jesus, wow, what the fuck? <laughs> God, fucking no, no. I love these stark red and white that we go to. Oh, it's that one. Well, Kiri Komori. <gasps> I'll help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh no. So where is she hiding, though? Uh-oh. And made this her new room? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Kiri Komori. Okay. Hmm. Stalker? Hi. Yeah, but... Tsune... Tsune Tsuki. So Tsun and Tsuki, I assume. <laughs> Wait, was that... I just saw a lucky star. I just saw, I think it was Konata. Uh. 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 Uh huh. Uh. Yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Deep rub. <laughs> I think you're a stalker. Yeah. Ooh, style swap. What? <laughs> Food photos. You can see so many monogatari things here. Uh-huh. True. Oh, is that the guy she's in love with? Kudo.
<laughs> oh no! <laughs> no, 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 no. No. <laughs> Going Super Saiyan. That is a really fine. Oh, wow. <laughs> Cake smoothies. Oh. Not kudo. I said, say. Please. <laughs> Fucking hell, Sensei. God damn it, I should have known. <laughs> Just made her a murder stalker now. Thanks, Sensei. She's gonna fall in love with the teacher now, isn't she? Glug, glug. <laughs> uh, fuck you. <laughs> okay, so our Sensei now has a stalker. Straight ahead, go, full power, or what? <laughs> uh -huh. What? Oh, they're Code Geass references. That's what that was. <laughs> die, die, die. That casserole is Katsuna. <laughs> Boys love recruiting club. <laughs> Honey and Clover. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-uh. Not gonna work. <laughs> Yay! No! <laughs> Fucking hell. Mm hmm. <laughs> She's right there. 
Nope, that's a different person. Okay. Oh. Uh. Nothing strange about that. Oh. Uh. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no should be very happy should be very grateful you don't you really don't. <laughs> it's creating a chain. <laughs> Oh, that was Mida, so Midax. Okay. I don't know about that, man. Hi. Super loving stalker girl. <laughs> white, white at the end of the tunnel? Hmm. Awesome. Awesome. That was cool. <laughs> so I wonder if this is going to be a running gag for every episode that there will be a an attempted attempted suicide at the very beginning of the episode and then some kind of moment where where she <laughs> could kill him and he clearly attempts to actually avoid it, even though he's running toward it. This how he just sort of like whoosh. <laughs> Underneath or over the over the the bar, wow, wow, wow. So the style gets a uh, a little bit more distinct in this episode with the the number of different like locations and places we go to, background characters that aren't characters and don't matter. Um, really interesting. I think the the most interesting thing in this scene is like the only thing moving besides the characters' mouths are that one curtain with the symbol 
which when I was looking for uh, the logo to use for the thumbnails, I actually saw that symbol come up, that penguin symbol. So recognize that. Um, and especially in this particular scene, it's very trippy. Very trippy, odd motion back there. Meant to be wind, but also to be off-putting. I love when it, it sort of uh, devolves into this, this like half-shaded monochromatic style with the deep, deep shadows. It's, oh, it's really great. It just looks so good. Um, and then there's this moment where we go, we go hard white background with, uh, oh, where, where, what did I just do? I just hit a button and didn't mean to. When she's, when she's threatening him about going to see Komori-san, uh, he refuses and then, that music immediately kicks in and that's all we need to know, right? It it serves its purpose super well. And then jumps back in. Callback humor. The shoes. And the doorway. <laughs> the doorknob itself gets a low angle shot because it's that crazy. And we get her. She's She is in there and wrapped up. So, continuing to be way too optimistic about it. Makes the, uh, the, the wrong... I'm gonna... I'm going to Google that, actually. Zashiki Warashi. How spirits fond of mischief, loved by all, and believed to bring great fortune and riches to those whose houses they haunt, appear as ghosts like five or six-year-old children with blushing faces. Okay, that actually would make sense for her to, to, to think that. Bring great fortune and wishes, and if they leave, then it becomes a bit more of a curse. Bad fortune if they leave. Okay. So, ridiculous, but makes sense in an odd way. <laughs> and I love how we just get crazier and crazier with these insane fish eyes. We get a similar one from the outside of, or the inside of the room at some point here. Yeah, as she's trying to get out. We probably see interesting things on the, the books. I didn't notice. Not sure what those are actually, but okay. I know that there are a number of interesting references scattered throughout this episode. Man, this show manages to do, like, horror humor, where what we're watching is horrifying, but because of, of the situation, it comes across as comedy. It's kind of cool. Kind of really cool. I love this. The way she moves out of the light here. Fantastic. The, the dark, dark shadows once more, but with color. Creepy little doll things. And I love these in particular, where we turn, like, the sky to, to, to red. Usually it's only red, black, white, and then some grays in between. Uh, when we get these, but uh, really love that style, and I love these little cards that come up too, as as like changes, breakups in the flow of the conversation. Really interesting. So she becomes obsessed, kind of. Uh, also, I freaking love that he has like a suicide pact list, and I also fucking love that he has a suicide travel kit. These are just goofy goofy ideas that make perfect sense for him as a character so she becomes a hikikomori outside of her house which doesn't make any sense but is perfect and then we meet Astalka, whose name whose name itself like i i don't i don't know this for sure but uh tsune and ski together would be like the, I, I think that's the same tsun from tsundere, and ski would be love, so, like, smash them together, and you get kind of a stalker, which is kind of cool. <laughs> Sensei. Okay, uh, tsunetsuki matoi, uh, hito nami, ujiyoshi harumi, kirikomori, right, and kobushi abiru. Hmm, okay. And escaped. What? What? <laughs> Stayed here. Okay, but we don't know who those characters' names are yet. I really like her. The, the guidance counselor lady. I really like her. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, 
when we when we pan through the pictures, I know that there's a reference to Lucky Star on the last one. Is that are those what is that? With the 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 the, the bracelets and the spiky things. It it looks like something, but I don't know what. That is that Gal or something? No, I wouldn't know. I don't know. No idea what this is. Actually, is that Beck? Barb? Uh, could do eight, Papa? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Don't think it's Beck. Okay. Uh, that particular cat girl with the ear things is definitely a thing, and that is most definitely a Konata. Uh, okay. So, I'm gonna assume that there are probably references in there that I just don't get, and that's okay. Entirely fine. Oh my god, the use of color just throughout is so insane. Why would you think to do that? Why would you think to do that that way? I don't know. But it works. It really works. Even even when it's pretty clearly just to mask, like, to make the shots much simpler to, 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 to do. It's amazing. Okay. And then we have this freaking style swap insanity, which I assume is all one artist, uh, doing a very simplified thing. But why we go on this absurd trip here i have no idea like what it's almost it's almost yuasa-y in the way that the the shapes like blend in or like mush into one another it's really weird tea ceremony club and we show up and we've got uh photos of food which is a very shafty thing that I've only seen before, I think, in Monogatari. So this may be the origin point of that. Get a joke about about having to evenly divide the maths. Until eventually. <laughs> Until eventually it gets crazy. And then we get a a video. Uh, so they, they actually put a camera in the bottom of this blender. Which is kind of cool in and of itself. Pour it out and ding! Back to that. Oh my god, and then the stalker chain. I almost forgot about the stalker chain. Yeah, the true meaning, true deep love, would be committing suicide together. <laughs> Again, this is just kind of fascinating that we're inside the box looking out when it opens, and we get their expressions, or lack of expressions as they notice it. Well stocked, along with other items. So what is it? A, a will, sleeping pills, red lead. <laughs> I'll die with you whenever you want which to her comes across as a confession of love and she's just like yeah I don't care about you anymore and this sets off the chain the chain reaction I love these these are cool and they're also very reminiscent of the the missing scene or the black frames from from Monogatari but of course they they have images in them really interesting style stylized images with like this sort of woodcut esque, yeah. Woodcut esque, very limited number of colors, but all of them vibrant and and cool. Awesome. So the staring, the staring, the staring. Um, and then on the on the board there are a number of, I believe, a number of Code Geass references. Uh, Gureto Strike. Okay, hold on. Where were the other ones? Negotiation still underway. Full power orange. I appear. Gee, just staring, staring, staring. Yeah. <laughs> orange boy. Okay. That's pretty great. I'm always at the climax. I assume that these are all quotes. I don't recognize all of them, but that's okay. Uh, the execution on this horror of a stalker sequence is amazing, and I love it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, hi? Yeah, uh, hi. And now we have to get married. 
We lay together. We must get married. Refusing fake illnesses. Okay. Please do a proper job. God, the way that these characters on these DVDs and books and whatever look are terrifying. They're like horrible troll entities. <laughs> and then we set up the stalker chain. This is... I think this is the best idea in the show so far. That she is following Taka Takashi, but she is, I assume, uh, from this, appears to be either either a stripper or uh, a prostitute. <laughs> Anata, <laughs> you've abandoned me for a whore. And then what? But that's that's my Dax, the guy whose face appears all over the place. So using this uh, this moment to make fun of him, putting him in, I guess, tidy whities the Pied Piper of Hamelin. Yep. Running after him with a marriage registration. Awful. Uh, say, say. Hi. And then straight into the ED. Well, there is now plenty to despair about. The funny thing is that, like, Sensei is, is always so worried about the things in his head that are going wrong, that he doesn't seem to really recognize the things that are actually going wrong in a way that almost leads him to 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 solve the problems without intending to, you know? Like, he recommends suicide to, to the stalker girl, and just the way he phrased it, I'm willing to die with you at any point, turns out to be kind of a love confession, which prevents her from going and stalking someone else. He sort of brings the despair in the world to him and acts as a, a, a hate sink, if you will, you know? Yeah, that's kind of cool. I'd love to see how it develops over the course of the series, but it's kind of cool, kind of interesting. Okay, let me see if I have anything else written down. Ooh, deep Ravu. <laughs> and food photos. Kudo not the target. Turu dipu ravu. Yes, and then the lucky star reference at 11.30. So we've gone through everything that I have written down, and I need a new piece of paper. So let's go ahead and I will obtain a new piece of paper. And I'm going to take a, a momentary break. You, will, you won't see any of it, but a uh, momentary break just to resync all the tracks and stuff, and we'll be back in just a moment. See it in zero seconds. All right, so we are back and ready to roll for Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei Episode 3. If you're using the timer-based version, I'd recommend getting it ready because the timer to sync yourself up is coming at you right now. Wow. <laughs> what an instant tone setting for the music. That's so great. That is a tiny person. You just barely see it. Nice. And those discordant hits. It's got so much edgy, angsty, punkiness to it. I love this OP. It has already grown on me a lot. And I started out liking it, so... Oh, that's different. Maybe I just haven't noticed it.
cool. Is that a new character? Same establishing shot every time. <gasps> what? That was... That was Kira. That was Light Yagami. Death Neat. <laughs> Still? No. I do, though. Yeah. I'd rather not. <laughs> I swear I haven't seen it. <laughs> it just builds up. You gotta marry me. The the haircut goes up. <laughs> Thanks, teacher. <laughs> Not expecting anything from you. Hmm? Oh. Overseas class? Like transfer or like um exchange students? Nailed it. Oh, that's the texting one. It's very strange that there are no seats behind them. You just physically threaten in your students. All right. Morocco of shut what? <laughs> huh? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, but by how much? So what are we counting up to in the background? 9, 11, 16, 24, 30. <laughs> meru, meru. Oh. Thanks, Shaft. Thank you, Shaft. <laughs> Ugh. We'll see. What? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Asimo? They have arrived. Oh. Blonde. And super cute. Of course. 
Kimura Kaire. Thanks, that helps explain everything. So he's a fortuner. Back down to thirteen. The monk who left through time. Mm. Whoosh. Hmm. <laughs> Only visiting hours. Aw. True. True. That's... <laughs> Guys, <laughs> welcome to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. That's cool. So is she... Uh, half Japanese and ostracized because of it and yeah generally not kind to foreigners girl with bilingual personalities a what? Do not trust. Oh. Yeah. So... 
Kaide versus Kaere. Hmm. <laughs> she she won't. <laughs> <gasps> oh no don't don't get in the way of that <laughs> gee <laughs> Oh, this is so weird. Wait, did the... That was the fusion dance. Switch personas. Oh, you gonna try to die? Perfect. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Shoot. Will that snap? Yep. <laughs> mm. Vantage shot. Hmm. 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 Nope. Yep. Believe in the you who believes in you. No, it's believe in the me who believes in you. Taro. Seki. Utsu. Kun. Which would be male and Taro is a male's name. So that's who we saw.
Oho. <laughs> of course. I'm sure. All companies. Yeah. Maria. So, they're all intended to be Hispanic, illegal immigrants, or potentially Filipino, right? Hmm. Did she eat? She is here under false identity. Holy shit, so that's the real Seki Tsutaro? What? Why, dude? It doesn't look like you had much of that. <laughs> mm-hmm. As long as everything's in order. <laughs> I mean, there are a few laws being, being broken here. Another man's treasure. Little penguin. Yeah. Uh, also, there was a very bloody teddy bear over there. She's a weird one, but they all are. Get pulled longer. <laughs> uh, uh, well, seems to be doing great. Yes, in the show, at least. All right, she's pretty. Pretty great. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Oh, I'm so not okay with that. <laughs> A legal student refugee girl.
Cool. Love the intro to this episode. The 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 starting music. Ooh, and I missed that. Life is pitch black. So this is, I guess. This is her arrival, right? Going by Taro. But we'll we'll just call her Maria. This is this must be her arrival and finding the first thing that she can find here. Ha. Huh. Interesting. And we come in, so we've got two two very different uh foreigners sort of coming in. One an illegal immigrant, one a legal uh returner, if you will. That shot is so cool. This whole sequence where I I don't know, I I just I, I responded the way that I would respond, and Sensei responded the exact same way. It's pretty cool. Uh, we keep building up Texting Girl, who's really mean, uh, but is only texting. Cool shots, but when we see from above, we can see everyone in the class, and when we're here, it doesn't matter. It's just the first row of, of seats, because they're the only ones who are really characters at the moment, which is awesome and weird. You see the soul of a shishu, you will die? I don't know. Um, yeah, and then this sequence is a thing which exists, and, uh, thank you, Shaft. Just, just thank you, Shaft. Appreciate it. A classic Zetsuboshita. No Japan. And then, when she arrives, there's, like, we, we, we spend so much of this sequence in the wide, this wide here. Uh, where she is as tall or taller than Sensei. Can't tie an alligator to it. Well, no shit. Can't hang male and female underwear next to each other. Why not? Can't buy peanuts before the sun sets. So these are all just, just, just bullshit things that he has read online. He is indeed the pink supervisor. Individually practicing isolation. In other words, Dejima. Uh, Googling that. Dejima. Dejima. Dutch. Oh, 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 oh. It's the little trading post. The, the like, only trading post where, yeah, a single place of direct trade and exchange between Japan and the outside world. Abolished after Treaty of Kanagawa in 1854, and then later integrated again and was designated a historic site. Okay, cool. Cool, that makes perfect sense. So this is the one place where I'll actually interact with you, but otherwise I'd prefer to be in isolation. Perfect. And uh, she takes that as... The visiting room in the prison where her uncle is. Okay, all of these strange things. Seven three part. <laughs> Only somebody on their deathbed. Makes fun of him for the strawberry print thing. Which then she's wearing strawberry print underwear, isn't she? I believe so. Uh oh yeah, and then there's this amazing fire sequence where her hair wisps up and then um I don't know, gave me gave me like Ah, crazy vibes. I don't know. Really cool, fiery stuff leading into this kind of horrifying memory-based, uh, just, just getting told off by, by locals. The scream is horrifying and amazing. And then she's here, and then, yeah, there she is. Okay, so there's Maria sitting right over there in the corner. So there's Kimura Kaide and Kaire. Uh, I'm going to just Google Kimura Kaire Kaide. Oh, it's for, for Kairu. And, okay, and that returns... That that triggers her to to yeah okay 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 okay. Conflicting cultural differences. Well, thank you for the trivia, which says Kaide is the source of most of the panty shots in the whole series. Fantastic, more to look forward to. So that means something. And then um, when we do meet Maria. Uh, her, the first name she has is like Taro, is Superboy's name, and goes by Taro-kun, 
So she is a a perfect ideal woman in one form and a a foreigner in the other. Yeah, those were not personalities, just preferences. Following very yeah, demure, extremely polite, all of that. Gosh, the snark that comes out of uh, uh, Stalker Girl is pretty crazy though. Um, and then okay, hold on. Yeah, this this is the DBZ fusion dance, a hundred percent, and that's amazing. <laughs> so. Off she goes to suicide. Nope, absolutely not. A moment of hang time, and then a smash crack pop. And then a panty shot. Don't know the deal going on here with the, the, the court sketches. Just not sure. Number one, okay. -er. Hmm. And then band aid shot. When was Bakemonogatari? 2009 to 2010. So that was a little bit later. So. That band aid shot definitely hadn't happened. So it's not a reference to that. Wonder what it is. What is required for love? No hesitation. Interesting. She is missing because she is with him. And boom. Hello. Taro Sekiyutsu. Uh, translate. Sekiyutsu. Regular depression. <laughs> uh, Seki depression. Hmm. Uh, Taro Sekiyutsu. Sekiyutsu. I added an I in there. It's not Sekiyutsu, it's Sekiyutsu. Sekiyutsu Maria Taro. Sekiyutaro. Is the the derivative? Cough? No, that's not right. Somewhere I I see it. Uh, yeah. Uh, derived from the phrase "seki utaro," meaning "I will sell my name." Hmm. And then yeah, the fact that her name is Taro, and that's just that's just a boy's name. No chance that it's actually her name. Hang in there, Tomo-chan. Split your troubles into... I, they gotta be quotes. I don't know. The stuff in the background is just so much weirdness. So much weird stuff. So we follow her around, follow her home, and discover her entire family. Or, I assume. Or just whoever she's living with. And instantly just, like, find her extremely endearing. Yeah, the three of them with their Honda... Matsushita and Mitsubishi. Uh, Matsushita, I assume, is a company. Matsushita. Electric? Oh, it's Panasonic. Yeah. Matsushita Electric Industrial Co. Limited. Net income 284.1 billion yen. Big ol' big ol brand. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Cool. And Mitsubishi, so three huge companies. I don't have a Japanese name, so I say name is Otaro, and there he is. I wish that there was translation for the things behind him, but uh, I guess it doesn't matter. And she's fine as long as it was done, uh, quote unquote, properly. Japan is a land of abundance. And everyone kind of finds her adorable and must protect her. Also, Geppeldonger, which I assume is Doppelganger. Uh, yeah. So she just gets tons of stuff. Yeah. As soon as she looks over. So we get these these like awful I don't even know. Um and then this, which is the most horrifying thing in the entire in the entire thing. That's That's a pedophile. No.
Illegal student, refugee girl. Wow. All right, so we're really fleshing out the cast. We've got a bunch of interesting characters here now. Weird ones. And the ones that we have kind of met continue to show up. Like, Hikikomori girl is always showing up, always around, because obviously. Got a stalker now. Okay. <laughs> and now we've got an illegal immigrant who has taken a boy's name, Maria Taro. And a split personality, blonde, beautiful foreigner girl. Okay. This show is nuts. <laughs> like, this is nutty. All of them, all of them are already addressing like interesting issues. We've got the issue of illegal immigration. We've got the the issue of um. Oh, what's the word for being mean to people because of of something? Uh, 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 ah, not marginalizing. Um, although that works too. Whatever, we'll just use littler words that that fit. Uh, pushing away people with with foreign blood, um, or who are are different, and then hikikomori definitely seems like the one girl is uh, obsessed with technology and phone usage, which would have been definitely a thing when this was coming out. A stalker. Yeah, we're fleshing out a whole shitload of interesting characters. I wonder what we're going to continue to do with them. Just more more sketches, I guess? I guess. But there's often, like, a flow between them, too. Interesting. Interesting. So, I think that's about it for things that I wanted to talk about. Some really cool pieces of random and weird animation in this episode in particular. Uh, in particular, the scene where, where uh, Kaede, where Kimura, um, like thinks about her past and her hair goes whoosh and becomes these multicolored flaming awesomeness. I really like that scene. That was cool. Love the OP continues to grow on me. Love the ED continues to grow on me. Love the general music choices. There's always something unique going on in the background and uh, doing a lot of work to set the scene or set, set the stage for what's going on and set the tone. Um, a lot of the stuff that gets written on the chalkboard goes whoosh whoosh straight over my head, but that's totally fine. We knew that was going to happen going in, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, yeah. All in all, cool pair of episodes. I think this is going to serve to be a, a good, solid reaction for these two, and uh, I think two is probably, probably about right for this show. So, I'm going to wrap it up. I've been Tiabu. This has been... Uh, uh, th th this has been Sayonara's That's Supposed Sensei episodes two and three. I hope you've enjoyed them as much as I have. And uh, if you're seeing this video up on YouTube right now, um, then the next installment, which will probably be four and five, will be up on Patreon for early access people uh, within today, like within the next 24 hours, it'll go up. Um, so if you want it a little bit early, you can head over to Patreon and, and check that out if you want to, or head over there to get Discord access and support me and what I do and all that jazz if you want to. Um, those of you who are supporting me, I really appreciate it. I love you all. You're the best. Anyway, hope you enjoy these two episodes, and I hope to catch you next week in the next two, which should be more of the same interesting stuff. See you there. Peace.